When faced with two choices, how do you come to a decision? What factors do you consider important? Maybe you get a gut feeling, or make a pro-con list, or maybe you use logic, or listen to your emotions. My first significant decision dates back to 2005, when I was a year old. In traditional Korean culture, a baby's first birthday is celebrated with a big party. The main event is when the baby picks an item from a selection that represents different characteristics or achievements for the future. So there might be a ball for athleticism, a long string for a long life, or even a pencil for intellect. So you can imagine the commotion as people tried to get me to pick a certain item they favored. Every time I would reach out to grab something, there'd be an uproar, and I'd get scared and pull back. Eventually, I did end up choosing the stack of cash, so I'm waiting a couple years for that wealth to kick in. But even as a baby, I struggled to make a choice. Every time I would make up my mind, something would disrupt that thought and turn me another direction. This is precisely how I felt approaching science as a Catholic. About three years ago, I heard a sermon on the holiness of the human person. I found this really compelling. The Bible teaches that all human beings are made in the image of God. This makes us perfect and holy and different from the rest of God's creation. A couple months later, my biology teacher introduced me to the concept of genetic engineering. This is the practice of altering an organism's genetic makeup. This technology can make humans healthier and even more, stronger, faster, and fitter. I thought, that's really cool. And then I paused. Hold on. If we're so perfect and so holy, made in the image of God, what's holding us back from making changes? Why are we at liberty to create these changes? But at the same time, if we have the means to make humans' lives healthier or easier, What's holding us back from doing so? Growing up Catholic, I learned about many principles that would guide me in everyday life. When I say Catholic, I mean that pretty seriously. Baptism at four, First Communion at seven, Confirmation at 14, which is by far the worst age to have any extra oil on your forehead. But that's an issue for another time. So I began my faith journey very early on. One of the first things I remember learning about is the book of Genesis. This book teaches that God created the entire universe in six days. I didn't question this at all. I took it as fact. But can you expect otherwise from an eight-year-old? However, as a kid, I was also a big reader. I read a lot, all the time and wherever I could. And eventually, I came across this concept known as the Big Bang Theory. This theory states that the universe began as a single point that expanded with immense force. Again, I was puzzled. How could there be two explanations for one event? Was the Big Bang a work of God, maybe? If so, why was it in the Bible story? Since then, I've had many science versus religion moments. I thought I'd have to choose or prioritize one worldview over the other. However, I came to a realization when I had this epiphany. Science deals with the natural world, the physical and religion deals with the supernatural and the spiritual. Now, neither fit perfectly into these boxes, but recognizing that they play different roles is a good starting point. There are issues that arise when one discipline makes claims over events outside of its usual sphere. For example, that Genesis story about the creation of the universe. When taken literally as it's often taught, this Bible passage goes against many proven theories in astronomy or ecology. But now we're talking about more than light or water or plants. Things only become more complicated when human beings get involved. The Bible teaches that the first humans, Adam and Eve, were present at the beginning of the Earth. But Darwin's theory of evolution teaches that all living things, including humans, undergo changes through natural selection. In fourth grade, I got hooked in this documentary TV series called Walking with Dinosaurs. There are a lot of weird-looking creatures in this show, and I enjoyed watching them until I realized that the narrator kept referring to them as our ancestors. Our ancestors? What did he mean, our? The creatures on the screen looked nothing like me, or Adam, or Eve. So I came up with some wild theories. Was the biblical Adam a carbon Adam, maybe? Or was Eve bacteria? 
Thankfully, I've learned a couple things since fourth grade. In my sophomore year here at St. Francis, I learned that the Old Testament often uses metaphors to convey a message or a theme. We cannot take everything literally. So maybe the prophet Jonah did spend three days and three nights inside of a whale, but the major takeaway of that story is not lung capacity, but unconditional faith. We must learn to interpret what we read. The Bible does not always seek to inform us about the workings of the universe. It is also meant to guide your spirituality. So we know that science and religion are not at odds. They play different roles, dictating different areas of our world. But I'm going to go further and say that there is potential for collaboration here. At a basic level, there's a great deal of common ground. Both seek to provide a better understanding of our world and how it came to be. Moving forward, they both want to improve humanity and its impact. So why is it so hard to create this partnership? The crucial difference between science and religion lie in their modes of thinking. This is where my lifelong internal conflict began, with the fundamental differences between the ways that science and religion taught me how to think. The scientific method teaches us to test ideas over and over again and collect hard data. The thought of believing something without direct evidence is a sin in the scientific world. But as a Catholic, that's precisely what I do. I put my trust in a higher power and I take faith in miracles that I've never actually witnessed. Another important difference between science and religion are the timelines that they occur on. While religion has remained consistent for thousands and thousands of years, centuries ago, scientific ideas were explained very differently. For example, the Earth was the center of the universe. If there was a storm, it meant the gods were angry. So while science has progressed exponentially since then, religion has persisted. And while we've come a long way since sundials, I do have to give ancient civilizations some kudos. They place science and religion in the same context. For them, there was no divide. And here at St. Francis, this Catholic school, our religion and scientific education come hand in hand. Maybe you begin biology class with intentions, or walk from physics to moral issues, or maybe you find these prayer hands coming out before a chem test. I find the duality really enriching and evidently thought-provoking. So partnering science and religion in the real world could very well be worthwhile and effective. Because in truth, neither hold all the answers. Science can give us the what and the how, but it can't give us the why. And that why is crucial. While knowledge certainly is power, by itself it's not quite enough. We need meaning and we need purpose for the things that we put our energy into. And religion can give us that, as can philosophy or ethics. My point is, science and religion alone cannot stand as strong as they could together. I don't deny that this partnership will be difficult. Religious views and scientific advances are becoming increasingly politicized. In the current COVID-19 pandemic, protocols such as wearing a mask or getting the vaccine are polarizing people. Often, the reasoning against science-backed safety measures is religious, whether it's about complete dependence in a higher power or questioning if the vaccine is ethical. These views take religion to an extreme without considering the overarching principles of empathy or safety. Science offers things that religion cannot the facts, the figures, and the constant revision, and vice versa. Religion can offer us deeper meaning. Why are we putting our time and our energy into these endeavors? And should we be? Using both principles of science and religion lets us have a greater impact on our constantly changing world. If we recognize truth in both, we can finally create this long overdue collaboration. Thank you.